So Joe from Treadmill Heroes here. Today I'm changing out a uh, servo motor or brake motor um, inside of one of our seated ellipticals here. But this is a very common piece that's found in a lot of home exercise bikes, ellipticals, seated ellipticals. This is what creates the resistance. This is the original servo motor inside of here. So as a precaution before we resell this thing, we're going to replace it with a brand new one because these things do go out. They get a random short inside of them and it might show like a break air uh, or something like that or just not work all together. So we're gonna replace this. And I'm gonna give you guys a few tips on how to do that. These have gel inside of them that keep the gears lubricated. This is all sealed so you can't like service one of these. Once it goes bad, you just gotta replace it. They're around 40, 50 bucks. The number one rule when changing one of these out Get the resistance all the way up to level 20 or the highest resistance that it happens to be before you power it off. And I'll tell you why. That's level 20. And now I'm going to power the machine off. So the way the machine sits right now, even though it's powered off, it thinks it's at level 20. This is good because now all the tension is out of this cable. So now what I can do is I can take my, I don't know, screwdriver or whatever, because these are spring loaded. So I can take that down. And now I can take my brake cable out of the drum there. Now it's nice and loose. But now I can remove this brake motor out of here. Another very important part of this is remember which way the cable is ran. So I got to remember in this case, and everyone's different, the cable is run underneath the wheel right to that hook. Now, important part number two. I have to power this back on before I take this out because the brain up here thinks I'm at level 20. But this new servo motor is always sent defaulted at level one. If I plug this back in and this thinks it's at level 20, it's going to turn this gear and my whole calibration is going to be whacked. I have to power this back on. Now look, the wheel's turning on its own. I didn't touch anything up top. It's taking itself back to level one. And if you look, new one, old one, they're both in the same spot. That's good. Now I can replace this. Snip these zip ties that are holding this in. Be, care, be extra careful not to accidentally cut like a speed sensor cable or anything like that. And when you go to reinstall your new servo motor, make sure you've got all these extra cables zip tied nice and tight to the frame. You got some moving link arms and crank arms in here. If you leave this dangling in here as this thing rotates, it'll rip that right out of there and then you'll have even more problems. Now, when it's loose, we got to power it back on so we're going to plug your servo motor back in. This is the new one now. Remember, we got to now take this up to 20 to hook this back up. So we got plenty of slack in the cable. So now we're going to go up here to the level button. Now this is moving. We're at level 20. Unplug the machine. Now we can hook up our cable easily. Remember, we go under the wheel in this case. Put the cable back in there like it goes. That's, and then pull this down. Get that back in place. Get him back underneath there. Nice and pretty, nice and tight. We didn't have to struggle with that slide all the way down being at level one. Now that sits in there upside down if you remember. Now I'm going to screw that back in. I'm going to retie these little cables tight against the frame so they don't get hung up. And we should be good to go. Thanks, guys. If you've got any other questions, hit us up at treadhero.com.